It's a simple black and white photo, but if a picture is worth a thousand words, this photo may be worth quite a few more. After all, this picture is just a side note in the story of the most decorated flight in military history. Captain Jay Zemer was at his best behind the controls of a B-17 flying fortress. He was not, however, the best officer in the Army Air Force. Disciplinary actions made Zemer something of an orphan. He had no assigned crew or aircraft at his unit in Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea. Undeterred, Zemer gathered every like-minded misfit in the 43rd Bomb Group, men whose own discipline issues saw them removed from other flight crews in the unit, men who gravitated to Jay Zemer. Languishing at the end of a runway sat a B-17E, one that was damaged and about to be scrapped for parts. Some in the unit said it was shot to hell and cursed. Its tail number wasn't any help, 41-2666. Captain Zemer had it towed to a remote section of runway where he and his crew worked to return the cursed bomber to flight status. On June 16, 1943, the call went out for a special photo reconnaissance mission. One target selected for Allied invasion was Bougainville Island and nearby Buka Airfield. Zemer knew that they would have to fly straight and level over enemy airspace during daylight hours to get quality, usable imagery if a successful invasion were to take place. To prepare for this mission, Zemer ordered the aircraft's 30 caliber machine guns removed and replaced with heavier, more powerful 50 caliber guns. Zemer also had a forward gun mounted that he could fire from the cockpit, and in key gun positions, the crew doubled the weapons, increasing the number of machine guns from 13 to 19. Zemer kept his aircraft straight and level over Bougainville as the crew watched anxiously as 17 Japanese Zero fighters took off in an intercept course. The first wave flew out of the clouds, five enemy aircraft on a head-on attack. Zemer let loose a burst from his guns, destroying an enemy fighter. Bombardier Joe Sarnowski fired from the nose compartment furiously, shooting down a second enemy before a barrage of 20mm cannon fire pelted the lone bomber. Five of the crew were wounded. All of them stayed at their posts, all of them returning fire. The nose of the Flying Fortress took the brunt of the damage, exactly where Joe Sarnowski was. A 20 millimeter shell exploded, knocking him back. He was mortally wounded. Despite the grave injury, he painfully crawled back to his machine gun. The enemy fire had also critically wounded Jay Zemer. More than 150 pieces of shrapnel littered his body and shattered his left leg. The Japanese Zeros pursued the wounded bomber for more than 40 minutes. Finally, the enemy planes broke off their attack and the crew assessed their condition. Bloodied but breathing, except one. Lieutenant Joe Sarnowski was dead. As a bombardier and being only three days from returning to the United States, he wasn't needed on a photo reconnaissance mission. He volunteered to join his crewmates anyway. Captain Jay Zemer was in and out of consciousness, having lost a substantial amount of blood. When Zemer returned to Port Moresby, many of the soldiers there had to donate blood to keep him alive. His condition was so grave, he had actually been recorded as killed in action. Upon inspection, the B-17 Flying Fortress, nicknamed Old 666, had 187 holes in it. Miraculously, the photos were undamaged and later used to help plan the amphibious assault on Bougainville in subsequent months. Both Jay Zemer and Joe Sarnowski each received the Medal of Honor. Each member of the remaining seven crew members was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. Old 666, the most decorated flight in military history.